Outreach Center. Um, with virtual camp this week, we've been learning lots of things, and today I'm going to give you a little lesson that's a little rotten. I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about compost. Um, now compost, you're saying, isn't that like the dirt that Granddaddy has behind the barn that's in the thing? Well, yeah, he's probably got a compost bin going. I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about what that is, how we use it, and what we do with it. So, first of all, you have to understand everything that you see, you touch, you smell, you taste, it has come from the earth in some way. So that's everything. Let's say that's plastics. That's gonna be your glasses. That's gonna be, of course, your food. And then also, that's gonna be your plants. So when we're looking at these four things, one of the things to remember is some of these are non-biodegradable and some of them are biodegradable. So what biodegradable means is the fact that it can be broken back down into those smaller building blocks and be put back into the earth and basically be recycled. This is a form of recycling for the earth that we can do. So what happens is when we take these things that are biodegradable and can be broken down and you're sending them to the landfill, you're basically robbing these nutrients that you can recycle, you can reuse, and you can put back into your food chain. So let's talk a little bit more about moving those nutrients up the food chain and recycling them. So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna start with the basics. That's gonna be your grass. So when you start with grass, then you're gonna have something that's gonna eat the grass, and that's gonna be your cows, your animals, and things like that. And then what happens is who gets to eat the cow? Me and you. So what we're doing is we're taking nutrients that we put into our grass by feeding it with those good composting materials, and we're moving it up into the food chain, and we're making a better type of food source for us in the long run. Now, so let's change this up a little bit. So you say, well, what else I'd like to eat grass and compost? Those are your worms. What well, likes to eat your worms? Your chickens. And then we'll either eat the eggs or we're gonna eat those chickens themselves. So when we put better food into the building blocks of our food chain, we eventually get better nutrients up the chain. So here I've taken off the front of our compost bin so you guys can see while I kind of teach you a little bit about composting. Um, so with this guy right here, you're gonna see that we have layers, like beautiful sandwich layers of peanut butter and jelly in this compost bin, but those layers are very, very important. There are things you need for compost. You need to have browns, greens, air, and water. Now let's talk about what are browns and greens. Well, your browns are going to be things like pine straw, clippings um, that are dried up and shriveled, and then leaf pieces. So that's gonna be very, very rich in carbon. So you need that carbon to be going into your compost. Your greens are gonna be very rich in nitrogen. This is gonna be your clippings from your lawn, your sweet potatoes, if you have some that you cut off the ends when you were cooking them, your green stalks, things you're not gonna eat. Um, so these are gonna be two things that we are going to layer in our compost. Um, you'll notice that ours has vents on the front. That's so it can be properly aerated. It needs that air to continue the process of breaking down. This isn't food that is rotting. This is food that is basically breaking down. It's biodegrading. Um, then also what we'll need is we'll need water. So water is very important. You want your compost to be about as damp as a kitchen sponge. It needs to have a lot of moisture in it. That's gonna help it break down. The other thing we do to help this is we're gonna aerate it by turning it over with our handy dandy pitchfork. We'll get out here, we'll turn it, reset that top layer with some more browns, and then we'll continue feeding those greens on top to create those nice layers. So compost is interesting because it is almost like a living organism, even though it's made of a lot of other living things. Um, we talked about how it needs to breathe, it needs water, and it needs nutrients. But the other things that live in there are almost just as fascinating. So of course, in compost, you're gonna have worms. Um, classic, you're gonna see these guys breaking down that material. You're gonna have, sometimes you're gonna have ants. You're gonna have slimy, slimy slugs. And then you're also gonna have pill bugs or sow bugs. So all of these guys are what we call mechanical biodegraders. They're gonna break down that material by tearing it apart, tearing it into those pieces and making smaller parts. Now, the other thing that's gonna live in this compost is a little bit harder to see, uh, but just as gross and disgusting. That's gonna be your bacteria and your fungus. So these guys are actually gonna live in your compost. They're gonna be breaking down those materials in a chemical reaction and making them into something new, allowing them to turn into that composting material. So while you may not have a setup like this, you can do composting in a lot of different things. You can do it in a big bin, you could get it at a local department store. Um, another thing is you can do it in a bucket. Something as simple as this is a great way to recycle. So what we're gonna do is we are going to start by layering in our browns in first. 
we're gonna put some of our greens on top. And then we would add some water. And lo and behold, we have started a compost. You can let this sit in the sun, let it bake from the outside a little bit. That heat's gonna start breaking things down. And every three days, you can do a couple of different things. You can get in there with a trowel and stir it around. Or you can just give it a good shake. Now, you can also add some sand, some loamy materials, and a little bit of dirt to start this breakdown if you want. But usually the water and the green starting to break down will be all you need to start your compost at home. So a few things that we have to just finally end on to talk about compost. You'll notice that ours have these wire racks on top. That's because your compost is not nature's buffet. You want to make sure that you're protecting it from all of those things like little raccoons and little squirrels. They can get in there and eat it, but we really don't want to be feeding those guys out in the wild. We want them off eating what they should be eating. They're a natural part of their diet, not my leftover eggshells. The other thing with this is you'll notice there are some things we don't compost. So we don't compost meat or dairy. Um, those things are going to rot in a whole different way and attract things we don't want living in our compost. We don't do a lot of things like make sure you're getting off your fruit stickers. If you're composting bunches of greens, make sure you're taking out those rubber bands. Anything that would be trash, we don't want in there. No oils, greases, or lards. Once again, you're getting into a rotting situation. And also, those oils will coat the outside of things and then the water and the sun will not be able to break them down like they should. You're not going to compost. It's just going to be very, very gross. So please make sure that you post a video. You show me what you guys have been doing. Post me a picture in the comments. We want to see Friday at our wrap up what you guys have been doing with composting. So with composting, all this work, why are we doing this for? That's for what's going to be waiting in the bottom of your compost bin after a year or so. You're going to be able to go out and get this breaking down. This is still has a little bit of pine straw material in it, but you can see falling out is that beautiful black soil, things we're going to be able to put in the bottom of our tomato plants. Um, I've already taken some of this and put it in my squash for the year. And it will make your plants grow bigger and beautiful and produce more fruit. Um, so it's something that we're very thankful here. We're feeding back in and we're feeding back into the ecosystem.